you poor unfortunate souls. Welcome to this spoiler review of 2023's The Little Mermaid, brought to you by the Geek Buddies. <laughs> we can only do six seconds of that, I think, before we get the strike. <laughs> We, we are diving in with a special spoiler review of The Little Mermaid. There's something that came up over the weekend. Mike and Shannon and I, and I think our friend uh, uh, Jonathan Gabay, we were going back and forth about our feelings about the movie. And uh, Michael and I found ourselves on opposite sides of the spectrum on this which, film. Which has never happened. <laughs> yeah, right. So we thought this might be fun to actually uh, break this thing down and talk about it and give our thoughts about everything that happened with the plot, the changes from the original animated film, uh, the adjustments, maybe the lyrics. We'll talk about the Rob Marshall's direction. Of course, the three new songs, uh, the performances across the board, the look of the film overall, and uh, also get into like the length of the film being 30 minutes longer than the animated film. Did that do a disservice or did that actually help? the live action version. And before we start, I just want to remind you all to please subscribe to the channel down below. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell button. You know, we're trying to get to 50,000 subscribers here by the end of the year. We're starting hardcore on June 1st to go a big, big push, kind of like one of those PBS donation pushes to get us to 50,000 subscribers. So help us do that if you enjoy the content we do here in the Outlaw Nation, especially the Geek Buddies. But I am the Outlaw, John Roker, writer, producer, and host, and somewhat... Disney fan, a mainstream Disney fan, I would say, not hardcore, but certainly mainstream, Michael. I am Michael Vogel. I am a writer and producer of animated TV shows and movies, and one of the reasons that I am a writer and producer of animated TV shows and movies was in 1989, Little Mermaid came out, the Disney <laughs> Renaissance began, and I am a hardcore Disney fan. Yes, yes, you I are. am, as you might say, a Diz nerd. You could call me a Disney gay. Wow. That is a category of homosexual that I definitely <laughs> fall under. Um, I grew up in Florida, spent a lot of time at Disney World. I right. live in Los Angeles. I spend a lot of time at Disneyland. So uh, it's, a Disney, I, it's a Disney world over here. You're eminently qualified to- Eminently qualified. You certainly speak knowledgeably about this subject. Well, let's let's waste no time after we've done all the pleasantries. Let's get into it, Michael. What are your general overall thoughts? Because we are going to get into specific stuff, but what are your general overall thoughts on 2023's The Little Mermaid, directed by Rob Marshall? Overall, not really a fan. Wow. Okay. I will say I am a 100% fan of Halle Bailey, Halle Bailey as Ariel. Yes. I think that she knocked it out of the park, and I think that any moment that she was on screen, yeah. the movie was pretty magic. I think I think oh. she was spectacular. I think when she sang Part of Your World, it mm. was iconic and gorgeous and brought tears to my eyes. I thought she was fantastic. Okay. And then I think everything beyond that was a law of diminishing returns that, that either was fine and right. not better or worse than the original, or okay. in a lot of cases was a pale comparison to the original. Okay. Uh, so wow. all in all, I think that I can talk, there's definitely some things that they added that I thought were really smart, but okay. I also think, and this is my opinion, I'll take a step back before okay. we before we hear your opinion and just say, this is my opinion of all of the Disney live action remakes, okay. which is the more that they do differently, uh -huh. the more successful they are as a movie. Uh -huh. Because as much as we all love yeah. uh, classic Disney animated films, seeing the classic Disney animated film in exactly the same way with exactly the same colors and exactly the same dialogue yeah. with live action actors who aren't doing it the same way that we remember it from when we were kids yeah. never quite cuts it. But when mm -hmm. they expand on the story, when they do things differently, um, most particularly, I think Kenneth Branagh's Cinderella yeah, yeah. and Favreau's Jungle Book are still two of the most successful Disney live action remakes because they really added to the story and made a lot of differences. And what I do think with Little Mermaid, and we'll get into the specifics of it, yeah. I think the biggest uh, shame in this live action remake is they had a lot of really good ideas that they put in here. They had a lot of really good additions that had they pushed further and push those ideas even more, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. this would have been a much more successful movie than uh, it is to me. I mean, ob it's, it's obviously a hugely successful movie, 
box office wise and it's going to make a bajillion dollars but i think for me it would have been creatively more successful had they pushed some of those differences and expanded on the story in different ways i think that's a great delineation to make the creatively successful versus financially successful right will this i mean because lion king you and i saw lion king together live action version and of course as i've told many times michael was calling the shots before they happened as soon as he realized that it was essentially a shot for shot remake uh but that thing made 1.6 billion dollars so yeah. who knows what little mermaid is going to do because right now it started out well but not as strongly as they were hoping but there was also review bombing of this thing over uh in europe and in different countries uh, and China and st stuff like that. So it's certainly facing an uphill battle for a number of reasons. And sadly, unfortunately, one of those reasons is Halle Bailey because she's she was cast uh, to play the role and she's black. And that, that was, uh, caused a lot of issues for some people. So we'll see in the end if it is financially successful, um, if it may be, in Michael's opinion, it's not creatively successful. Um, on my side of the fence, and I did already my uh, uh, review of it uh, last week, so if you guys watched it, you know I really enjoyed it. Now, I will say this. I am, I've am i seen Little, Little Mermaid maybe three or four times in my entire life, the animated version. <laughs> so we come to it from two different perspectives, but I think both perspectives have value. If I'm walking sure. into this cold and I haven't seen the animated or only seen it once or twice, this really worked for me. I enjoyed the way Rob Marshall fleshed this out, took his time. I enjoyed the visuals, loved the undersea Busby Berkeley, big Carmen Miranda dance numbers that they did for Under the Sea. Really enjoyed Kiss the Girl. I thought he photographed that so, so well Ooh. and brought the emotion of that so well for me. Um, I didn't mind that the chef's song was missing. I Look, <laughs> this is going to be big controversy, I know, between Michael and I. I liked the new songs. I liked Scuttlebutt. I like what was the other one that they have here. I liked for the first time, which is getting up all in. That was kind of uh, ingenious to go like, well, how can we put a song in here where her voice is gone, but we can still hear her singing? Oh, she's doing it in her mind. And then it becomes this thing. Wild Uncharted Waters. I really enjoyed it. To me, it sounded like a mixture of Jekyll and Hyde and Sweeney Todd. So it worked for me for what was going on. So I thought they did a nice job with this. I enjoyed the performances. I enjoyed the direction. And yes, of course, as Michael said, Halle Bailey is universally the one thing everyone is praising, whether they like the film or not, right. is her performance and her singing. And so just like for me, Lincoln, Daniel Day-Lewis sells that movie. It, the movie doesn't 100% get to the level of Daniel Day-Lewis's performance. Even if you don't like the movie, I think Halle Bailey's performance yeah. helps you enjoy it at least a little bit. Yeah. I think Halle Bailey, like I, as I already said, I think she's fantastic. And I think she brings a lot of, uh, she brings like a little bit of a different flavor to Ariel uh, yeah. and just her attitude and the way she plays her. And I thought she was delightful. Yeah. Um, I it'll be it's gonna be an interesting discussion because I really was disappointed in both Under the Sea and Kiss the Girl, um, no. and Sebastian Ow. in general, and Sebastian in general. I don't okay. think that David Diggs really got there, but I do think another another. Um, challenge that little mermaid specifically had yeah, yeah, yeah was that they clearly and this is kind of what i mean about if you're going to tell a movie and you want to go in a little bit of a different direction you yeah. have to really push in that direction to make it successful they clearly were wrestling with the problem that as a lot of people have said the original 1989 little mermaid there's a lot of criticism about the fact that ariel finds this guy, right. falls in love with him right away, and right. then basically dips out on her entire family to go follow this guy and has to kiss him after three days. Right, 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 right. And they clearly were trying to navigate around that. They yeah. definitely doubled down on Ariel's love for the human world a lot more, really mm -hmm. made her want to go to the human world, which is great. Yeah. They got rid of the fact that she and her sisters were singers uh, and yes. made their the, the sisters roles more important. Great idea. Yeah. The whole seven seas, interracial sisters, because each one of them had a different domain of the ocean was, I thought, really, really cool. Yeah. But at the end of the day, this is still a romance and the plot of the movie still revolves around somebody trying to kiss somebody for, for three days. And so adding in this whole amnesia angle uh, that Ursula gave her amnesia so she forgot she needed the kiss. Yeah. Like it just it's it got very sort of cluttered in the middle because they were trying so hard to avoid it being just a romance. Mm -hmm. But it's still 
at its root, structurally, the original one is a romance. So in trying to tell the original story, yeah. but also not tell the original story, I feel like there was a lot of pushing and pulling in different directions. Whereas like, I'd actually have been super fine had they ditched mm -hmm. some of the iconic scenes and some of the iconic moments and really pushed it in its own direction. Uh, to tell a really different story about the Ariel and Eric relationship, I think it would have been more successful. Well, you bring that up, so organically, let's go there. The Ariel and Eric relationship, I think, was one of the highlights for me, to be uh, to my point of view. I like that he is kind of like, they spend time um, uh, laying the groundwork for who he is on the ship. You know, that you see the guys at the beginning trying to throw harpoons at what they think are mermaids. Uh, that guy from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, and it's Dolphins. It's actually Dolphins, and he's trying. He's a good guy. He's trying to make them understand what's going on. He, you know, we see he's the prince. He's out on that boat. He's not supposed to be there. We see, the guy who plays his um, essentially his candler. That guy was Grimsby. great throughout the whole movie. I thought as well. Uh, Grimsby, but seeing yeah. how was that? Grimsby. Yeah, Grimsby. Sorry. Yes. So seeing, but seeing he, the way he's introduced, the way he's presented to us, I like this. Jonah Howard King is who plays Eric. I like this. He's got his own voices. He's got his own thing he's doing. And then when Ariel shows up, the, I do have the criticism that I do think we don't really see why Ariel has the, the immediate love for him. It's It can't be more than just saving his dog or saving the people on the ship. It had to be something more. And I think it, it should have been stronger the desire to be there. But I liked how they took them through the process. You know, she's doing, she's, she can't speak. So they're giving her the dresses and, and she gives as good as she gets. She's smart. She knows how to play them in the room where they have all the different, uh, different uh, uh, artifacts there. She is smart about this stuff. He's trying, she's showing him what these things can do. She's, you know, is, is in every way his equal. And he is not trying to change her or do all these other things. He's going along with this and slowly his grow, his fascination for her grows Instead of being obsessed with the girl on the beach who saved him and not knowing that it's her, he's allowing himself to go on this. They go through that little farmer's market thing, which I think is really cool with some songs there. Jody Benson have a nice cameo in that situation. And then when Ursula in human form shows up, there's a real confusion and issue for him about it and her about it. And Grimsby, the one, is the one who's pushing him to understand what's going on here. And the queen, of course, being involved in this, is, I think. And then by the end, we are much more I have I much more bought into the relationship by the end of the movie because they took their time giving them more scenes to see their love organically develop between the both of them. But I take your point, Michael. Some stuff did get a little confusing with the amnesia and all of this coming in and her becoming human, I think, didn't have enough power to really feel like a threat to their relationship. And maybe they had maybe they should have spent more time with that. So you could see why Eric might be questioning about the whole situation of it all. But that, but I still enjoyed their time together and I bought their chemistry throughout the whole movie. Yeah, look, I think uh, so. I, I agree with you that I think that they had some really nice chemistry. Mm -hmm. And as far as additions that they made, I think one of the best ideas they had yeah. was giving Eric a grotto of his own. Yes. So in the same yeah. way that Ariel has been under the sea collecting human stuff, right, he's right. got this grotto with all of the places he wants to go and things yeah. he wants to see and stuff that he's collected from under the sea. And I thought that whole scene was maybe one of my favorite scenes because it was something I hadn't seen before. Yeah. And it was really, really smart. Now, as far as we, we'll hit each of the new songs individually, but yeah. so the thing about Wild Uncharted Waters is it's a perfectly fine song. Mm -hmm. I have no issue with the song, but, and this is sort of what I mean about making a decision. If this is a movie about two kindred spirits yeah. who find each other, maybe, and you don't want it to really double down on the romance part of it, mm -hmm. maybe don't give me a song where a guy is singing passionately about this girl that he's in love with that he met once in his life. Mm -hmm. Maybe let Eric have a song about what he wants in the same way that Ariel has part of your world. Like, so it's, yeah. it's not, it's not that Wild Uncharted Waters is a bad song. We'll mm -hmm. reserve that title for Scuttlebutt, but... <laughs> Um, yeah. Oh, girl. Um, but Wild and Charter Waters is a perfectly fine song, but uh -huh. it's a romance song. And yeah. similarly, like, look, and you're stuck because this is iconically what Little Mermaid is. Like, you can't have Ursula say, I'm going to send you to land for three days, but you have to have him kiss you, not just any kiss, true love's kiss. Yeah, right. And then go, but P.S. Amnesia. So that as the main character, you don't have any drive for the back half of the movie. You're just hanging out. Right. And then have an entire song called Kiss the Girl 
And yeah. I, I get it. Sebastian and Scuttle were trying to do the work because Ariel didn't remember, but right. it's just like you either, either make the bold choice that Ursula's way she traps Ariel isn't about a kiss if you really don't want to do the romance. Uh -huh. Or if you're going to do the romance, just lean into the fact that that's just part of Little Mermaid and do what you can to make Ariel and Eric really appreciate each other as human beings and get to know each other. Yeah. And that's great. And like the grotto scene and a lot of the other stuff they did and the additions to them, like the whole dance sequence in the market, all those things were lovely. Yeah. But I do think that it just got really confusing in there because you just saw them wrestling with okay, well, oh, this is the iconic, but I don't want, but ugh, I don't. Mm. It, and it, I, I think the biggest, and along these lines, this isn't an Ariel and Eric thing, but it's part of the romance issue is yeah. 1989's Little Mermaid. Ariel, super in love with Eric. She's swimming around under the sea and she's like, da 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 And her sister's like, oh yeah, she's got it bad. Mm. And dad's like, what has she got? And she's like, isn't it obvious Ariel's in love? And Triton gets so excited that his daughter's in love that he calls Sebastian in to be like, all right, what's going on? Who's she in love with? And Sebastian spills the beans about Eric. Great, works in the movie. In the live action movie, they don't want it to be about romance. So Triton and Ariel have this really great debate in front of the sisters about humans in general yeah. and whether they're good or bad, which again, great choice. Like really yeah. double down on Ariel and Triton having these different opinions. Yeah. But then she swims off after a fight and the sister's like, I remember when I didn't want to be around anybody, I was in love. And then you have the same scene from the original movie where Triton is all of the sudden randomly excited that Ariel's in love with somebody, even yeah. though that hasn't been anything that's been established previously in the movie. It's like, and they put it there because that's the iconic scene from the original. Mm -hmm. But if you really don't want it to be about romance, like have Triton and Ariel really fighting about other stuff and have Sebastian spill the beans for some other reason. So again, it's like one of these things, it's like, I actually support them in mm -hmm. their desires to do some of the things they wanted to do. And I just wish they hadn't felt so constrained and had really just pushed the boundaries of it. Yeah, I, I, you know, but I, again, I have to put, I have to disagree because I liked the way that went down. I liked that they had, because I mean, it spoke to what's going on in our world now, this idea of othering, you know, those people are bad because of- That part's great. Bad. Love yeah, that. I, agree I with you. the battle. And I, and, and having one of the sisters, giving these sisters a little bit more to do with the plot, a little bit more to do with what's happening, I like that. I think that's one of the criticisms I actually have is why introduce all seven of the sisters and then only give them occasional scenes. I would have liked a bit more. I would like to. I agree with them you. To have I a think, little more interactions in the film. Yeah, yeah. I think that once you'd make the decision to not just have the sisters be all living in the castle with Ariel and they all are just right. singing for everybody and like each one of them has their responsibilities, it's a great idea. Yeah. Give me yeah. more. Yeah, I would have yeah. liked to. Have seen I that. usually, I movie. usually disagree with you when you start going give the second, <laughs> third, fourth tier characters more scenes. But in this case, I actually think you're right. Like, well, yeah. it's a good idea. So, yeah. tell me what who these sisters are. What is what are Ariel's responsibilities as a kind of uh, regent of one of the parts of the Seven Seas supposed yeah. to be? And what is it that she's not doing because she's off collecting human stuff? Like, yeah expand on that it's a good idea yeah she's got to have one of those sisters who's a best friend that she can confide in that that's something you could have played one of the sisters having more of an active role in all this so she's kind of the bridge between her and the other sisters to help her go through you even set it up by having her saying i remember when i was that young for me it was about love yeah is that what's going on oh i better go find out you know and so it's not necessarily triton sending sebastian it could still happen but you'd have yeah. one of the sisters there as kind of a bridge to the whole situation i think i would have fully could've... supported that i think yeah, that's a and, great idea and this is the sad part about disney sometimes is they're like okay we've done enough just having them in the movie you know, you've got to you know you got to give agency to these characters if you're going to do a diversity great give it more agency give it more space uh, and time in your movie. If you're going to do uh, get LGBTQ plus characters, give them more time in your movies. They've got to be honest with these things and, and, and really flesh them out. So I agree with that. Well, let's move over to Ursula. You mentioned Ursula earlier. Let's move over to that. Melissa McCarthy uh, playing Ursula. Let me bring up a picture of her. You know, interesting design. I saw, I spoke with a couple of uh, people who talked about her eyebrows because apparently she was kind of maybe doing a drag version of Ursula and people say no self-respecting drag queen would have eyebrows like this. So I saw, I heard criticism. Now I personally didn't, you know, say that, but I heard that throughout this uh, th initially when I saw this stuff. So Michael, what do you think of the design? They changed her from what was it an, uh, to an octopus, right? She, As she went from a squid to an octopus, six to tentacles to eight tentacles. <laughs> yes. Uh, and her song. Yeah. So please. I, 
do question those eyebrows. <laughs> I am not quite clear on what the choice was with those eyebrows. And if those eyebrows had showed up on RuPaul's Drag Race, Michelle Visage would have had something to say about those eyebrows, I believe. Uh, so I don't, yeah, I don't know about those eyebrows. I think, I think Melissa McCarthy was fine. Okay. I, I don't think she did anything horrible. I think that she had some really funny moments. Okay. Um, I think that, again... I wish they had let her cut loose a little more ah. and do things a little bit differently. I, I, there was moments where I just really felt like they were like, hey, guys, Ursula is like a top tier Disney villain. Let's make sure we get you, you got to say this this way. You got to say this this way. And I just I wanted her to take some liberties. Yeah. Um, I also a thing that I and again, this falls under the category of it's not my idea. It was their idea. I thought it was really good. I wish they had done more. In the movie, in both versions of the movie, in the yeah. animated movie and the live action, the first two scenes that Ursula's in, she's kind of just monologuing in her lair. Yes, yes. She's just rolling around, monologuing, doing her thing. And it works in the animated movie. In the live action movie, I was like, girl, who are you talking to? But then when she uh, was was casting the spell to turn herself into Vanessa, yeah, um, all of the tentacles kind of had their own... Uh, uh, life, their own life, their own yeah. mind. They were kind of doing their own thing. And I'm like, Doc well, guys, yeah. you've got all these great tentacles. You're doing the Doc Ock bit. Yeah. Have her arguing with those tentacles in the first two scenes in the movie. It would have added a different level. It would have been something new that I hadn't seen before. It would have been a lot of fun. Um, That's a great point, so, actually, Michael. Yeah. So I would have loved to have seen more of that. Yeah. I also, and this is not something they made up for the movie. This has been in other versions of Little Mermaid and in sort. It was supposed to be in the original movie and kind of got cut out. Is yeah. that Ursula is Ariel's aunt? She's Triton's sister. Right. And that's not mentioned in the original animated movie. And I yeah. think it's a great addition. I'm glad they added it. Wish they had added more. Give me more backstory. Why did she get banished yeah. specifically? Mm -hmm. I think they did a really smart thing uh, when Ariel first got to the lair, to the grotto. Yeah. No, not the grotto, the lair. Uh, where um, Ursula was kind of trying to be like, look, you and me are the same. Like, your, your dad doesn't get you. He didn't get me. I think had they established more of what Ursula had been banished for yeah. and had her use that to really convince Ariel, I think that would have been really smart. So yeah. again, my biggest issue was not, oh, it's not like the original movie. My biggest issue was it was a little too much like the original. And I, anywhere where they deviated, I was like, ooh, that's interesting. Give me more. Yeah. Um, so I think I think Melissa McCarthy did fine. Like, I don't have any major issue. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that had they really let her cut loose – and kind of do her own riffing in the Melissa McCarthy way that she does in some mm. of the other movies that she's in, where she wasn't just like, hey, give me, give me, I don't need to see every Ursula line that I love from the original done by Melissa McCarthy. Yeah. I'd love for Melissa McCarthy to go to town and give me some new iconic Ursula moments that I've never seen before. Yeah, there's a reason Ursula became, uh, for some people, one of their favorite characters, favorite villains, is because the actress who played her in the uh, in the animated film you kind of couldn't help but love her, like be by attracted to her charm and her the way she did it and her throaty kind of cigarette smoky voice of hers and the way she held herself and the design of her. You kind of were like, this is a this is a really interesting character. Yeah, you're right. You could have given Melissa McCarthy more real estate to do more of that, have these conversations. So she's a little bit maybe possibly insane or unstable that she's having these conversations well, with these pieces of herself because they could represent different personalities of herself. And then you can dive into a little bit more of what she's doing. And you might even make her somewhat um, redeemable in that way as well for when she gets that. The, uh, yeah. The I mean, look, there's, sword. I, I think had they leaned into her being a little bit more kooky Duke, uh, yeah. it could have been really fun. Um, I also think that, you know, and this, this is sort of more, this gets into like sort of the reimagining of things. Cause I think mm -hmm. again, what w the more successful a movie is, is when they don't just go, what happened in the original, let's make it real. Let's right. do it live action. Right. It's more like, let's get under the hood and think about the reasonings behind some choices in the original and what are our yeah. choices. And Ursula's design in 1989 was modeled after Divine, right? Who is one right. of the OG drag queens? You know, she, in the original John Waters hairspray, yeah. a very famous drag queen from back in the day. So now that we live in the era of RuPaul's Drag Race, yeah. like let Melissa McCarthy be a little bit more 
Alyssa Edwards, Jinx Monsoon. Like, let her really be, like, a little bit more wacky, wild, uh, and have fun with it. And I think, again, that would have just made it come alive. I think the biggest thing with the live the live action remakes that don't do as well for me is nothing really seems as alive because it just feels like everybody is going through the motions to give me the thing that I've already seen. Wow. I, I don't feel that way about Melissa's performance or what we no, saw. No, I, like I said, I don't think yeah. that she, I think she did a nice job and she had her right. moments for sure. Right. But right. I think like, I, I, I will tell you for me, yeah. Um, we got to poor unfortunate souls, which is again, like top five Disney villain songs of all time. Top Agreed. three, probably if not number one. And I was kind of bored a little bit. Wow. I was like, yeah, you're doing it. I've seen it. Wow. All right. Well, there you go. I, I, look, I, I, yeah, like Michael, I enjoyed Melissa McCarthy's performance. I thought the design worked really well. I thought she got better as the film went along. I agree. With the, the introductions in the lair were kind of weird, and you're like, okay, what's going on here? I feel like you're doing something that doesn't fit what we've been what, with what's been presented in the movie up to this point. So, what are we doing here with this? I felt the same way, Mike. But I think as it went along, she got as she got a little more real estate, a little more time in the movie. You saw her really kind of take command of certain scenes, take command of certain areas. And I, I did love that scene when she is trying to figure out how to do the potion so she can turn herself human and ripping through everything and screaming and everything. And I agree. I, I said that in my review. I felt like it would have been nice to find out what happened here between Ursula and Triton. And I yeah. was speaking to a friend of mine and uh, she, she's seen all the animated movies for Little Mermaid. She said, you don't find out what happens to Little Mermaid 3 about what happened between them and then what happened to uh, uh, King Triton. Mom. Yeah, Ariel's mom. That's when you find out all this stuff. I'm like, why not put it in here? Even with Triton and Ariel, we don't know what happened with his, with his wife and her mom. We don't know what it was, just that the humans were involved but we don't know how. Did they throw the spear at her? Is yeah. that what that was? We don't know. So a yeah. little and this more is all, fleshing out. Yeah. And this is all the stuff, exactly to your point, mm -hmm. this is what a live action remake of a classic animated film should do. Yeah, it's fair. It That's can be fair. a little bit older. It can be a little bit darker. It can be a little bit more mature. It can yeah. expand on the story and give you more than you had in the original. And it yeah. can really yeah. just sort of... Uh, give you new shades to things, give you new levels of things. And I just felt like they sort of gave you a little mention of something here and there, but they didn't really dig into it. And I'm like, that's kind of what would have made me really excited. Fair point. Let's finish out the acting. Let's talk about Javier Bardem as Triton. Let's talk about uh, Aquafina here, David Diggs and Jacob Tremblay. So um, Javier Bardem as Triton. I like, let me go first. I liked Javier Bardem. I thought he did a great job as the dad. As a Latino dad down in the water, I saw some, or, or Spanish dad rather, down in the water, I saw some of the points of views here. I saw some of the actions, him getting emotional and then him feeling guilty about it and questioning things, asking his daughters, did I go too far? But I, you know, I've seen some reviews were saying he, they felt like he was sleepwalking. There are some beautiful moments with him and Ariel at the end when he is like, pushing the boat and letting her go and really accepting and understanding what happened and sacrificing himself for his daughter when Ursula has her. I thought he did a nice job in this role. I don't know why people feel like he didn't have any life or was collecting a paycheck. I couldn't disagree more, Michael. Well, let me tell you why. <laughs> um, look, here's the, and I, you know, there's been, um, uh, I think Screen Crush just did a really good video about this. But the thing is, mm. the the core emotional relationship, what Little Mermaid is really about, the yeah. emotional core of this movie is Ariel and Triton. Yes. Sure, yes. Ariel's in love with Eric, but this is a movie where Ariel feels one way about humans, Triton feels one way about humans. They do not get along. Yeah. And at the end of the movie, he lets her go. And the very last line of the movie is, I love you, daddy. In the live action, it's, I love you, father. But right. either way, like the last moment of the movie is the Ariel Triton moment, not Ariel and Eric. So right. Triton, Triton is a very important character and a very important role in this movie. And this probably falls under the category of how many times have you seen the original? Mm. Because King Triton has a massive temper. Yes. He is explosive. Yeah. Javier Bardem is not explosive. Javier well, he Bardem, has the one scene where he does lose it. He, but he doesn't. Go, go back and watch the original animated movie and watch, tr watch Triton lose it on Ariel. Well, right. And it's watch Triton cool. 
destroy that grotto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and cool. then, and most importantly, and I've talked to several people that felt this way, and then when Ariel is laying on the ground crying, watch Triton's face change and crumble as he realizes how badly he just fucked up his relationship with his daughter. Mm, okay. And then watch Javier Bardem do it, and you go, okay, you guys gotten a little, okay, I guess. <laughs> And like that was every Javier Bardem scene. Like you just, really? I was wanting, and the dude can do it. We've seen course, him do it. Of course, great. I know he. Like the, I'm not questioning Javier Bardem's acting ability right, here, right. but that was the thing. Is he just kind of felt like he was there, <laughs> but he didn't like he he didn't engage with Ariel. Like he, you didn't feel like his daughter was really getting under his skin. Like you didn't feel like he was at the end of his rope but, with her, yeah. and 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 it just that was, and to me, that's one of the bigger flaws of this movie. But he's a he's a much more caring father than that father in the original movie. Okay, disagree, I, disagree. I, 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 I just you know he loses his temper, and then he realizes what he's done. He feels terrible. He's talked to the sisters about what he's done, and all of this. And Sebastian, he's sitting on that throne, completely beating himself up for what he's done for losing control and destroying that thing that area, the, that version of Eric that Ariel had down in the grotto. He is legitimately in pain for what he's done in the animated version. His extreme, his, his anger is so high. It's from a different place. Uh, and yes, he crumbles in all of that, but it's a different version. I like this. This is a softer version. This is a version who cares more for his daughter. He loses I it, but then he realizes he messed up uh, in a different way, a softer I way. I think. don't think that this is, I don't think that you can say that this is a character that cares more for his daughter. I'm not well, saying I, he cares I, less, but yeah. Triton in the original movie clearly cares a ton for his daughter. That's why he's so angry because mm. he's like, you're gonna get yourself killed. And later in the movie, when Ariel is on land, they have a sequence. And I'm not, I'm not saying that they have to cut back to every single moment of the movie, but right. in the animated movie, you cut back to the, the undersea kingdom and you see him like, where are they? What, where is she? And he's like, leave no stone unturned. And he yeah. just crumbles ball by himself. And he just says, what have I done? What have I done? Like you see him like realizing, and they just don't have that. Ariel gets on land and we don't really visit Triton until Ursula shows up. Like Triton's just right, out of the right, picture. Right. So I, I I do think that, and I, and I don't think this is entirely on Javier Bardem. Mm -hmm. I do think that Rob Marshall, uh, the whole creative team, it was like, they didn't, it just feels like they didn't fully get how important this was that you should have spent, if even if you got rid of a bunch of other things, you should have spent more time. And to your point, John, yeah, I think that adding in, like having a much more complicated argument with them where the othering, that yeah. Triton is all ultimately othering all of humans. 100%. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and for Ariel to be like, you can't say that. And so they have those moments in there and they're good moments. But right. had he been more frustrated, had he just been like, you don't get it. I think it just would have made the end when he does let her go stronger. And I do mm -hmm. think that, so look, and again, different strokes for different folks. If you yeah. love the movie like John did, awesome. But yeah. to your point, the people that are saying that they felt he was a little flat, I think that's why. Yeah, fair point. All right, let's hit the three other ones then. Let's hit David Diggs as Sebastian, Aquafina uh, as uh, a Scuttle here, and then um, uh, Jacob Tremblay as Flounder. So, did you did any of them stand out to you? Um, I thought I thought Jacob Tremblay was fine. I think okay. that Flounder sort of gets short shrift in the movie only because we can sort of accept the cartoony fish bouncing around on land near the things, but like. Once they get on land, they don't really know of it, what to do with Flounder. So I think Flounder sort of really takes a back seat. But I thought that he was fine. He was super adorable. It was cute. The 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 CG design of the more realistic fish didn't bother me as much as I thought it was going to. Okay. Um, I think Aquafina does fine. Okay. Uh, again, we'll get we'll get to the scuttlebutt a little bit later. But I think she does a perfectly fine Aquafina version of what Buddy Hackett did in the original. <laughs> um, I, I and I think that like. And it, and it, and it, you know, it's her own bit. Like she, yeah, like they, yeah. I think they definitely let Aquafina kind of do her own thing. And if yes. you don't like that, it probably drove you crazy. But I thought that kind of her version of Scuttle, I was totally okay with that. I was a little weirded out. I totally get that birds dive underwater. This, and this is a bird yeah. that dives underwater. I was kind of confused about how it dove underwater and had like a five minute conversation without breathing. <laughs> That was a little weird to me. No, but the fact that it can talk is not a little weird to you. What are you talking about, Michael? I'm fine you with know? animals talking, but you know when, when animals talk, they're breathing. Like, 
birds do dive underwater, but that's yes. not diving. It was a weird choice, and I think I, I got it. Like, it, right. it was very much like they were like, look, she is forbidden to go to the surface, and so we want the moment when she finally goes to the surface for Eric's right. birthday to be the first moment that she goes to the surface, right. which means that she can't go see Scuttle on top of the water, so let's have him fly, float underwater. But it was a little weird. Um, <laughs> All right. David Diggs, I will I will preface this by saying that I think Sebastian is one of my all time favorite Disney characters, so I'm probably a little biased. Okay, but I really did not love David Diggs. The the, wow. the character design did not bother me as much as I thought it was going to. Okay, uh, okay. I think in the context of the way the movie rolled out and like the visual yeah. palette that the movie had, I was like, okay, like I get this as the design. Right. Um, I, I David Diggs felt like his whole read, his performance felt like he showed up at the booth. Maybe he had been out drinking the night before. He phoned oh it in God. and he went home with his paycheck. Like, I was really not into David Diggs. Um, I also think that, and again, yeah, in the original 1989 Little Mermaid, originally Sebastian was supposed to be the king's major domo, yeah. and he yeah, yeah, was yeah. gonna have a British accent. And then uh, Howard Ashman and Alan Menken came in, and Howard Ashman was like, "What if we made him like the court composer?" and made him sort of uh, Jamaican. And then he would, then he can have these great musical numbers and whatever. And so the fact that they got rid of the court composer thing, cause they didn't want the sisters to just be singing, which I understand. And yeah, I think yeah. that was not a bad choice, but then making Sebastian just the King's major domo, he's not this sort of musical cre creation. So yeah. him singing the songs, a major do a stuffy major domo. I don't know that he sings this amazing Caribbean. Let me sing you how the great under the sea is. So again, it's one of those moments where they made one choice to change some stuff, but then they were like, "Well, he's got to sing under the sea because under the sea is under the sea." And it this character in this movie didn't necessarily feel like he would be the one to do that, aside from the fact that it's Sebastian and he has to. So that was another place where it's like, eh, I guess. And then as far as the musical numbers go, yeah, yeah. The bigger issue that I had is that both Under the Sea and Kiss the Girl mm -hmm. are supposed to be giant musical numbers with a giant cast singing. Yeah. Um so you by the end of both songs, you have this full a full chorus of fish and clams and slugs and you know slugs cutting rugs and snails and whales and like the whole thing and similarly with kiss the girl you have the frogs and the birds and the whole thing yeah. and with both of these under the sea is just sebastian and ariel singing and kiss the girl is just sebastian scuttle and flounder and so both songs yeah. feel uh not full they feel very kind of light and not wow. uh don't have the impact of the original versions okay <laughs> again well first let me say i agree with you about uh, jacob tremley i thought he did a nice job very cute aquafina I, is an acquired taste i love aquafina but i don't always love aquafina and i thought when she first showed up it was kind of jarring in the movie when she first shows up because you know she just has one of those voices and the no. way she's kind of playing that character it's a bit jarring and then as the film goes along, you can see that she really does care about Ariel. She cares about oh, this whole situation and, and, and what's going down. So I, I thought she grew into the role or, or the film itself. Or she grew into the film a little bit more as a character, which I enjoyed. But uh, I really liked David. I thought he did a great job with this. I, I, I went along with this Sebastian. It's a different Sebastian. I like the approach he had. He's got his own conversations. You know, every time he's walking away from the king, he's essentially feels like a guy who certainly could have done more with his life and ended up in this situation. So you have that element underneath it all, but he does have care for Ariel from the opening few scenes. And he does like have affection for her. They don't, maybe they don't establish that strongly enough where you would feel like he could be that kind of uncle who'd sing to her and do all these kinds of things. I could, or pseudo uncle. I could understand that. But for me, when he popped into the songs, I thought they were great. And all the fishing, all the fishes rather, and all the creatures dancing around and doing all the Busby Berkeley stuff that they essentially did. I thought it all added a lot of magic to it, that song, even though it's Ariel and Sebastian singing only. It still felt like everyone else was singing, even if they weren't necessarily singing on screen because uh, of all yeah. the action and dancing they were doing. It, it really... And again, I mean, like, it, yeah. it, I had the opposite reaction that I had in 1980. In 1989, I was kind of like getting to that age where I didn't really think that I should be going to animated movies anymore, but I kind of <laughs> took my brothers and sisters to see Little Mermaid, and I'm like, okay, we'll take them to see it. And when Under the Sea and Kiss the Girl happened, it was yeah. like, holy shit, 
I didn't know animated movies could have songs that were this good. Mm. And now here we are all these years later and I'm watching it and I'm like, wow, I didn't know you could take songs that were this good and make them this. Um, the You're one other thing I'll say, yeah. Yeah, the one right. other thing I'll say about Sebastian that kind of irked me, and this is not W. Diggs' fault. Again, this right. is the this is the script. Is that I think it's really important in part of your world in the original Sebastian. Yeah. That's when he finds Ariel's grotto. He sne he follows her, and he sees right. the grotto. So he's there for part of your world. And there's a bunch of comedic moments where he falls on her stuff and whatever. And it's cute. And I think they just they didn't want him there because they wanted it to be Halle Bailey's moment, which I respect. Yeah. But maybe take out some of those moments, but I think it's important that Sebastian is there mm -hmm. because that's the moment that he hears from Ariel yeah. what she wants. And I think that in this movie, when he gets to land and follows her up there after Ursula, and you have the moment, again, taken right from the movie where he's like, ah, we're gonna march you straight down home and you're just gonna be miserable for the rest of your life. All right, I'm gonna help you find that prince. I buy it in the original because yeah. he's kind of seen how much she cares about this stuff. Right. In this movie, I was like, again, I was like, I don't think that this character would do that. I don't think that this Sebastian would be like, all of a sudden be like, yes, let me help you do this thing that is absolutely forbidden. <laughs> It didn't I didn't buy it. Yeah, I mean, you and I just disagree because I think they did a nice job laying the groundwork for him wanting to make that decision and wanting what, to encourage it. What and about what what about this version of Sebastian made you think that? Because that, what, what was the groundwork that you liked? The, their conversations at the beginning of the movie, near the beginning of the movie, when they're having the conversation, she know he knows she's a rebellious girl. She doesn't show up at the function. He knows he's got a, he's being sent out. The whole shark situation. She ha they have experiences and conversations and communications where you, you see the relationship has been already established between them. So I bought into his affection for mm. her. I bought into his care for hey, Look, I know you're trying to have the last word here, but I'm allowed to counter you on this review. And I think she he had, they absolutely had a great relationship. Right. So I bought it. And Kiss the Girl worked so well for me. It worked so well for me. The design, the visuals of it all, the cinematography, the way they constructed it all, and the way it almost happened, and even the changed lyrics didn't bother me at all. I thought it all worked so well, and it was very magical, and Flounder being a part of it, even Scuttle singing off-key, I thought was a nice little um, uh, thing to add to it. So for me, these moments really did work in a live-action setting for how I think they might have actually been. So we're just going to have right, to see we will. Uh, all right, let me let, let's take a quick break, Michael. We've got forty right. minutes in this uh, review, and we'll wrap up uh, the review talking about a couple other things here uh, when we come back after this. All right, Mike. Let's get into the Rob Marshall's directing here. The production numbers for Under the Seas we mentioned: Party World, the undersea stuff with both Triton's Kingdom. Ursula's kingdom, but also the stuff on land here with Eric's kingdom and the ship stuff out on the water and uh, the the farmer's market, but also the pacing of the film and the way that he built all this up and how everything was going, the way he led us to this finale here where um, Ariel finally reveals herself of who she is and we see the reactions and then it's the queen who changes her mind about it and, 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 and encourages Eric to go after realizing she was wrong about othering the uh, sea creatures and yeah. uh, all of this. So what did you think about Rob Marshall's directing? You know, um, did Mary Poppins returns uh, Chicago won best picture, which he directed years ago. So what did you think about his, what he brought to the film here? I think he, look, I think that from a visual standpoint, they did a nice job. I think that okay. when the early trailers came out, um, particularly after Avatar 2 had come out and we had all seen like what James Cameron can do with underwater effects. You saw some of these early mermaid things and you're like, I don't know. But I actually think it was lovely. I think I think they really did sell me on an undersea kingdom that I believed in. Okay. Uh, I thought the mermaid, like I, I bought the scenes, they're floating the hair, a little bit of like uh, particles in the water around them. Like I thought... I thought it looked really nice. Uh, I think expanding Eric's kingdom out was really nicely done, making it more of like that Caribbean kind of kingdom. Like, so I think sort of a lot of the choices in how they shot everything, mm -hmm. um, it looked good. Like it's a good yeah. looking movie. It didn't look cheap. Yeah, It was a very pretty looking movie. Um, my issue is my issue is not with the way it was shot. Uh, my issue is more with like, just uh, like I said, like I've said over and over, like really like giving me something more mm. um than than just 
here's the beats that we need to hit. And, and at times they did. And when they did, to your point, John, because you, yeah. you, you made some good points there, it's like when they did step out of it, when they did give me uh, Eric's mom uh, yeah. and how she felt about the mer people and like the humans othering the mer people and the mer people othering the humans, like all of that kind of stuff. I'm like, that's all interesting. And that mm -hmm. is kind of what the core of the original movie is. And now in a live action movie, we can expand on it. Um, but then it just never felt like it pushed as far as I would have liked it to. Okay. All right. Fair point. Yeah. I, I liked his direction. I thought, but, I, but it may just be, you know, Rob had a little bit of edge to Chicago, but you couldn't, you couldn't really say Mary Poppins returns has an edge to it. And I thought it was a nice sequel, but certainly wasn't a hundred percent capturing the magic of what right. he had of what Mary Poppins, the original with Julie Andrews. So this was a, a Titanic task to take on, so to speak, dealing with water uh, with, with, uh, you know, kind of bringing live action, a uh, version of live action from this classic animated film. And I think he did a nice job kind of exploring more of what you do here. I take your points of what you said earlier, though. There was more to dive into. There was more to uncover here. There was more to dig up that they could have uh, discovered about this. And maybe there would have been more, how can I, uh, fant more um, incredible scenes for us to experience and enjoy and in see the Little Mermaid in a completely different way, even for the people who've seen the animated film so many times. Yeah. But I thought with the the newer stuff, I thought he did a really nice job with the newer stuff. The pacing of this really worked for me. There wasn't a rush here to get to where we we're going. I didn't check my watch once, and yeah, I was surprised. I thought, by I thought, it. I really I thought the movie was pretty well paced. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't I think there was a pacing issue at all. Like, I don't yeah. think that. I think a live action remake of an animated movie should be longer. Like you should yeah, be, right. exactly. you yeah, should yeah, yeah. be filling in the gaps and giving me more stuff. So yeah. I think uh, it didn't feel like it was dragging or, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, that movie could, you could have cut 20 minutes out of that one. Like I didn't feel <laughs> that way. Like I was, right. I was good. Um, but I do think, you know, you make an interesting point with Chicago. And I do think yeah. just kind of to underscore like my overall thesis of all of these live action remakes, I think one of the reasons that Chicago is still one of the most successive, successful yeah. adaptations of a movie musical from a stage play is they took a big swing. Yes. Right. Having 100%. saying, hey, 100%. all of these musical numbers are in Roxy's head. Right. Like what's happening in the real Chicago story of her in prison and cell block tango we are that this is a departure like yeah. we are doing this separate thing that's not in the original stage show the original stage show just a bunch of people singing and dancing and so yeah. they took a big swing and did something really different for this version and i think that more of that is what we need in mm. all of storytelling if you're going to remake a story if you're going to give me the 95th version of peter pan yeah or you're going to give me the live action remake of every one of these disney movies because it seems like they're going to do a live action remake of every single one of them yeah yeah, they're working uh, their way up. Gi yeah. give me you can do it i'll be on board with you i'm a super disney nerd but give me yeah. something really different the way rob marshall did with chicago yeah, uh, I do want to give quick credit to uh, Noma Dumasweni. That's who plays the Queen and Art Malik, I, uh, who plays Grimsby. Yep. I thought they were both highlights of the movie, and I thought Rob Marshall did a really great job uh, bringing out what they the how can I say it? fleshing out more of Eric's world through yep. them. You know, they're the relationships they have with Eric, the care they have with Eric, and I thought that was some really smart direction for Rob Marshall and how he was able to make uh, them have um, some great new colors and add new levels to Eric for us to kind of see him as more of a three-dimensional character and then understand why Ariel would have the thing for Eric that she does. Because yeah, in the original, I mean, Ariel is doing a lot of the work to make us believe why she's in love with Eric, right? Because Eric's kind I mean, of, you know... Uh, type of thing and there's more here yeah go ahead. i mean go ahead. yeah there's a lot of gay people listening to this that came out of the closet when they saw animated prince eric when they were kids so just let's be clear ariel's not wrong he's a hottie Terrible. animated eric yeah. hotter than live action eric but uh yeah. but i do agree like i i, I like the addition of the queen and that eric yeah. also had this pressure of a parent in the same way that ariel did i thought was really yeah. nice good balance um mm -hmm. i liked grimsby um oh, so good. i I, I, it felt like by the end, they were sort of hinting at a possible romance yes. between Grimsby and the queen. And yep. I was like, don't hint at it. Like, give it to me. Fair point. Like, ha had they made that more of a thing that as Grimsby was, you know, pressuring mm -hmm. Eric to kind of, uh, 
give up this this mystery maiden that he was obsessed with and maybe yeah. pay attention to the girl that's right in front of him had eric turned around and been like hey maybe you should do the same thing with my mom <laughs> like you know i would have been like yeah let's do it grimsby so i you know i think again it just yeah. i think that there was a lot of opportunities there where it seems like they had the right idea and i'm like yeah let's do, let's push it a little further yeah, I mean, I think there's there's the difference with you and I and our approach in this movie because you you're making excellent points, Michael. I can't, you know, dispute your your feelings about it because there's some some real value to what you're saying uh, and truth to what you're saying in that if you had gone even harder in this direction, uh, it could have it could have really been something new and groundbreaking and different. And I was like, I actually enjoy how far they went with this out of what had been before, and I was okay with it. So. Maybe it speaks to the fact that I'm I'm I don't need it to break new ground for me to enjoy it. I was happy with what we got, and I was happy that I found myself being caught up because I went in with my arms folded in my yep. my eye because I was not thinking I was going to enjoy this. I thought I was going to be it was going to be laborious for me, and I really found myself sitting back just smiling a majority of the time, really enjoying and caring about these characters. But you make a good point, Michael. If they had just gone even further in certain directions, it could have really been a groundbreaking different ballsy gutsy approach to the little mermaid that would have well, been interesting for people. and like to and look i think to your point um I, there's there's definitely some disney live action remakes that are just like it doesn't matter if you've seen the original cool. or not seen the original it's yeah. a stinker yeah. they did a really good like they they really they put a lot behind this movie yes uh yeah. and i just think you are right it is the difference of if you've seen little mermaid the original animated little mermaid three or four times <laughs> um, me, and then you go me. see this movie you're like oh it feels good to me yeah when you've yeah. seen the original little mermaid three or four thousand times <laughs> and you know every inflection of every line it's yeah. like you almost by definite like it's almost like you need something more um so that that might be it too i don't know but i do think that look it doesn't seem like disney is going to stop making these live action remakes no. anytime yeah. soon yeah. and so it's just i just really want them to uh, raise the bar for themselves creatively. Like not throw, just go, yeah. cause it's like, look, I think, and look, I love Disney, as I said at the beginning of this review, but by any metric, the reason they're making these live action remakes is money. Right. And sure, right. like it's show business. Like we all, the only reason anyone makes movies is money, but it's like right. the ones that make a lot of money, the ones that are really successful is somebody going, okay, but why are we making this movie? Right, right. And if the only reason you're making it is, hey, this is a beloved movie. People are going to go see it if it's new. Let's make a live action one. But it's like, well, what makes the live action different? What mm -hmm. makes this, how can we make this a special experience? I think it'll be more successful. Two things to say. First, if they're not stopping anytime soon, I mean, I think you should go st start making some pitches here and start maybe looking at some of these animated ones that haven't become live action and write the new, damn thing. I mean, you're need to get a new agent or manager. I need to get an agent or manager. Like, put me in, coach. Come on, you're saying. I will. I do want to touch on one thing. It. I know we're. I know we're. We're close to the yeah, end, yeah, and yeah. I don't want to miss this because I do want to read you. Yes. Some of the greatest YouTube comments of all time. <laughs> if you look up the uh, the the the. YouTube yes. uh, video of Scuttlebutt. Okay, well, I was just gonna get to the songs here, but I wanted to finish the point here. So let's get to the songs. Okay, but fine. But like, I had a second guys, point real quick. Scuttlebutt, I, hold on, wait for it. <laughs> hold on for Scuttlebutt. I think the comparison here for you and me is if you were to watch a wrestling storyline, you would, you might be like, I think you know this. They did a good job with that. But because I am so intimately involved and have spent yeah. decades, love, I might be like, no, they could have gone even further here. They could have gone further here. So that could be the difference and a comparable difference in how we look at something like this uh, in two different arenas. So I, I, I can take your point. Absolutely. So, um, all right, let's move on to the songs here to wrap up our review. We had three new songs for the first time, the scuttlebutt wild uncharted waters. We had lyrics changed for poor, unfortunate souls that took away a lot of the, uh, how can we say it? the fact that women shouldn't talk type of language? Of course, she's a villain, so I don't know why you took it away. But I mean, I get it, but I don't know if you needed to. Uh, and kiss the girl changed a little bit at, more con about consent, but everything else pretty much stayed the same. And they got rid of Daughters of Triton, and they got rid of my girlfriend's favorites, a song Les Poussins. She was so mad it wasn't in the movie. But Alan Menken staying as uh, uh, as the uh, making the score as the composer, but Lin Manuel Miranda writing those three songs, the lyrics for those three songs, 
So scuttlebutt. That's the controversy. So, so Michael. Well, so yeah. So really quick, I'll go through the rest really quick. Okay. Uh, the lyric changes to "Kiss the Girl." I don't know that they were necessary, but I I understand why they made those changes, and I don't think it hurt the song one way or the other. I, I think it's so perfectly either, yeah. fine. Poor unfortunate souls. They didn't really change the lyrics. They just dropped the entire verse. That's fair. That's uh, which is like yeah, just okay, dropped yeah. it fully. Um, I do kind of lean towards. Ursula is the bad guy and she's gaslighting Ariel. So yeah. her saying some shitty things about how girls should be seen and not heard it should be okay. But yeah. also, I don't think that it rocked my world that they dropped those lyrics. I thought it yeah. was fine. It's true. Um, you point across. Yeah. Already spoke about how I feel about Under the Sea and Kiss the Girl. Already spoke about like part of your world, part of your world reprise, part of your world second reprise, best parts of the movie because everything yeah. that Halle Bailey did was awesome. Um, I understand why they got rid of Daughters of Triton and made them more, uh, elevated the sisters to a more important role. So that makes mm -hmm. sense. Les Poisson, I wouldn't say that I missed the song, but I do think it's a fun opportunity. Like it would have yeah. been great to see that version of Sebastian be terrorized. Yeah. Like I, I'm like, <laughs> it's, it's that comedy still works. So I, yeah. I, you know, I don't know if it was more of like with all the effects budget that we're spending on this movie, we don't want to do an entire sequence where we have to have Sebastian get terrorized by a French chef. So I didn't miss it, but I think it probably could have worked had they wanted to do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, already spoke about wild uncharted waters. Think it's a perfectly fine song. Uh, just maybe think it was misplaced as far as if we're not going to really dive into romance. Mm -hmm. um, maybe give Eric a little bit more of an I want song. Um, I will say for the first time, I actually agree with you 100%. I think for the first time was a very smart song. Yeah, I liked the way that they used that to sort of get Ariel into the human world uh, and give her another song. I, th I thought that worked really well. I think Scuttlebutt is one of the most unnecessary and horrible, stupid songs. It is. It is that thing, and I love Lin Manuel Miranda. And even as other people have said that they've reached their limit with that Lin Manuel Miranda type of song, I've been like, no, that's his vibe, that's his thing. This was the one where I was like, oh come on, man, don't <laughs> just, just and it's I a, was just defending you. Stop it. <laughs> it there is no reason for this song to exist. This song does nothing for the movie, and it's just grating. Let me read you. <laughs> Some of these YouTube comments. There's a lot of them. There's oh, over wow. 8,000 comments on We're this video. We're not going to read 8,000. <laughs> I'm not going to read 8,000. I'll just give you a smattering. Okay. Um, I love how inclusive Disney has become. <laughs> they went through all this effort to make a song deaf people could enjoy since oh. they will never understand how terrible it actually sounds. Oh, my God. That's terrible. I work as a detective. Whenever I'm trying to get information about a murder, I play this song to the suspect until they answer my questions. Ever since the song dropped, I've been solving more cases. Thanks, Disney. Um, this song is amazing. I use it as an alarm clock, and I wake up an hour earlier to avoid hearing it. <laughs> um, uh-huh. I will admit that this song has a nice intro. Then Aquafina's voice hits you like a sledgehammer. Um, I, if you think you do terrible singing, just remember that this exists. No, no. It, it is Come a on. scuttlebutt is, is bad. <laughs> like, like there's a lot of things in this movie where I'm like, I didn't particularly love this more than the original. I don't mm. think that this fully got there. I wish they had done more, but scuttlebutt is just like a pump the brakes. Everybody. What are you doing? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to say, in defense of Scuttlebutt, I liked it. And look, you know I'm not the biggest Lin-Manuel Miranda fan with some of the stuff that he does. Certainly took me a while to come around on Hamilton, and now I do enjoy it. But, like, I liked it. I thought it was an interesting difference. Yes, is it kind of jarring as she is in the character and what have you? Yes, but that's the whole point. And I think it does serve the movie because she's the one that tells them that Ursula has become human and that she's on land and that Eric is going to marry her instead of, instead of Ariel, that's the scuttlebutt. And she's trying to get Sebastian to wake the fuck up and do something about it. Uh, so that, so that it doesn't have, so it doesn't happen. So it does serve the movie. She is giving it the information. And I thought it was perfectly designed for a character like that, who is intrusive, who is dive bombing, who is, you know, kind of cut through the stuff is kind of aggressive. The song made sense. Now here's I know here's like, like a rule of thumb. It's here's two a rule minutes. of thumb. Okay. It, look, it's yeah, it's 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 two minutes that I don't get back in my life. <laughs> I here's a rule of thumb with musicals. 
Yeah. Oh, oh. A, a person, a person bursts into song. Yes. When what they are feeling is so big. Yes. That they can only express it through song. And that could be anger. That could be, I'm putting my plan into action. That sure. could be passion. So when Ariel starts singing, I want to be part of your world. Wild Uncharted Waters, even though I don't know that it was the right choice, like Eric is having a feeling. He's got to yes, sing about it. 100%. Sebastian is trying so hard to convince Ariel to stay under the sea and forget the human stuff that he has to burst into song. Like there's a there's a moment where you're like, this feels like this is a reason to burst into song. Right. Scuttle flying in and being like, hey, guess what I heard doesn't fit that bill. So you just, the, the song starts and you're just like, mm. again, I have to disagree. She She has to get this out. Because she has to stop this wedding from happening. Because if she doesn't, Ariel's going to lose her voice. So she is driven by the love of Ariel to rattle Sebastian awake, to get going, and Ariel to get going as well to stop this from happening. This is from a place of passion and uh, wanting to achieve a goal here. So she's doing it through song. And she's doing it like this, so it isn't like, let me stroke your hair and help you realize this. She's like, get the fuck up. This shit's going down. So... I thought it worked well for the All movie, right. but you know, it's in All defense right. of Scuttlebutt. In defense, of Scuttlebutt. in defense of Scuttlebutt <laughs> should be the name of this video. Um. <laughs> uh, Michael, I think that's everything we can talk about here. Um, unless you want to uh, comment anything on the new uh, Alan Menken, any compo anything about his score, or anything. No, I, th I thought they did a nice job, actually, of taking some of the iconic beats of the original score, mm -hmm. but really expanding on it. Um, I will say, you know, I, 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 I do think that, per like I said, particularly at the beginning of the movie, uh, the reveal of the Undersea Kingdom, everything in Ariel's Grotto. Yeah. I thought that the entire uh, pirate, sh the storm, the storm yeah. and the ship, the yeah. shipwreck, I thought was all really well done. And I thought... The battle with Ursula at the end um, yeah. looked good. It looked really good. I, yeah. I had some quibbles with it, but I think it mostly like it looked really good and giant Ursula attacking everybody. I was like, yeah, okay, that's that looks cool for live action. So I think that again, visually, it 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 did deliver yeah. on a lot of things. Uh, it just yeah, it just left me wanting. Like I didn't come out and feel like I've got a uh, a new meal. I felt like I had gotten a recycled, repackaged meal mm. um, that was a really in a really nice package, but it was still a recycled pig package. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, for me, I agree with Michael. The visuals all worked for me. The the and I, I'm, I'm yeah, we should have brought up that ending. It was so fantastic. Large Ursula doing the things that she's doing, and then the back and forth between her and Triton, which I think was a good back and forth. Well, you could tell that there was a lot of pain there from Ursula's side. But as Michael said earlier, it would have been nice to explore that a little bit more, get a little more levels to that so that when that scene is happening, you feel a bit of sympathy for Ursula. Even though you know she has to go, you feel that sympathy for her uh, in those moments. So yeah, it could have been done a little bit more. But overall, I like the way they made the changes. I like the adjustments. I bought Ariel and Eric's chemistry. As I said, loved Grimsby and the Queen. Really enjoyed uh, Sebastian and Flounder, and uh, yes, I will defend Scuttle and Aquafina, and I just like what they did. Could they have gone further on certain things? Yeah, I wanted to see more of the connection between Eric and Ariel. I wanted to see more um, of Triton and uh, Ursula and what was going on between them, and I wanted the sisters to have much more say than they had in the movie, for sure, but I like that this does kind of walk its own path, even though and create its own magic, even though it does have scenes from the original animated film. I think it also creates its own version, which works for someone like me. And I know it didn't 100% work for Michael and some of you who are watching or listening to us as well. But for me, it did work. So, um, All right. Well, there you go. That's our spoiler review here. A fun little spoiler review for uh, The Little Mermaid. We appreciate you all hanging out with us and listening to it, uh, Michael, or watching it. Michael, what do we have to tell them? Yeah, if you would like to follow us and support everything we do, you can follow us on Twitter at geek underscore buddies. You can follow us on Instagram at the underscore geek underscore buddies. You can yeah. follow Mr. Roca at the Roca says, uh, and you can follow me at MK Tune. Um, and look, Roca and I, we did not convince each other. So nope. there is, uh, was Little Mermaid good? Was Little Mermaid not great? We did not settle this debate, but we definitely want to know what you all think about it. So uh, definitely, like John said, hit the like button below, subscribe to the Outlaw Nation page, but most definitely leave your comments yeah. below. Uh, are you Team Vogel? Are you Team Roca? Did <laughs> Little Mermaid do it for you? Did Little Mermaid not deliver? What's the scuttlebutt? Tell us below. Uh, if you are listening to this on podcast, definitely uh, leave us some stars and some uh, comments in the... 
feed so that we go up in yes. the rankings. Sorry, my AirPod fell out of my ear. No, no. Uh, and if you, uh, as always, the best thing you can do is retweet this video, post it on your socials, send it to your friends, and tell them to hang out with your buddies, the Geek Buddies. There you go. All right, thank you all so much for watching and listening to this. We appreciate you all madly and love you madly. And we'll talk to you next time with an, uh, another brand new video here from the Geek Buddies. Scuttlebutt. What's the scuttlebutt? Mm.